Hi guys and welcome to another kit review. So today, as you can see, we are looking at a kit from Academy. It is Academy's Black Panther 4 Whirlwind. It's in 135th scale. The kit number is 13236. Now this kit was released in 1994. Um, not this particular one. This particular one I just picked up uh, fairly recently. It's re-released, um, I believe... It has been reboxed at least four times, once by Ravel back in 2020. Exactly the same kit with the same figures and everything, only under Ravel's branding. This kit was originally released back in 1985. That's its original Academy release. And that kit number was TA046. But as I said, this one I picked up fairly recently. It cost me around $30 Australian. Um, it's that was including postage, so I thought that was quite a good bargain. Normal retail price run for this, uh, not including postage, is around thirty-five dollars to forty dollars Australian. You can get the Tamiya Whirlwind, which is about the same, a uh, little bit better quality probably because it's Tamiya, but that one retails for around forty-five to fifty-five dollars Australian, if and when you can see it. So. Let's have a look at what we've got. So, as you can see, it is a Panzer IV chassis with a turret on it, which has the four black verling guns on it. You do get uh, four figures, as I said, with this. Very small decal sheet. It does say accurately reproduced. Uh, you don't get a Zimrit for this. So, um, it's your choice. These were made on old Panzer IV chassis. Some had Zimrit still on them, some didn't. So it's entirely up to you how you want to play this one out. So let's have a look at the rest of the box. On the sides you'll see pictures of the actual model itself. Doesn't show you the crew, which is a bit weird. But yes, you do get crew with this one. On the other side, usual warnings in 10 different languages another photo of the vehicle itself and fairly plain almost Tamiya like white box so let's have a look and see what's inside check the parts list before unsealing you have one sprue which has your figures and your turret and spare track links and poly caps for the wheels you have and as you can see this is an old base, it's made for um, a motor and batteries. There's the top, so this isn't a very big kit, alright, that's your basic Panzer IV. You do have one bag with two sprues which has your guns in it, gun shield and mount, and accessories etc for that. Instructions. Couple more bits and pieces from Academy of how to cut sprue, etc. One sprue that has all your wheels in it and your vinyl tracks. And one sprue which has your fittings for the Panzer IV chassis, which is your cleaning rods and tools, etc. etc. And your very little tiny decal sheet. Basically, just the German crosses. And I think that might be, I'll have a closer look when we get to looking at the decals. That may be a divisional, but I'm not sure. All right, so that's what's in the box. In a second, we'll have a look at the instructions and the very small decal sheet. So let's have a look at the instructions. Fairly straightforward on the front is the usual indicators for what to glue, what to cut, alternative parts, etc, etc. Overleaf, it starts straight into assembling the wheels. There is no sprue layout in these instructions. So you start off with the dry sprockets, idler wheels, road wheels, etc. Then you go on to the back of the tank with the exhaust pipe. It does have some basic color suggestions it doesn't have a color 
chart and it doesn't suggest any particular manufacturer that shows you how old this kit particular is and you have the suspension going on for the wheels mudguards wheels going on it's fairly straightforward it's a fairly simple kit to construct then you have your tools front machine gun etc bits and pieces going on that's your jack spare wheels and then you just carry on assembling all the parts for the actual tank hull itself sorry about the noises it's very hard crunkly paper so there's a thing about these instructions i don't know if you've noticed it they've obviously been reprinted several times because the lines are fuzzy not that bad that you can't see detail but it's interesting that the papers is quite a crisp uh, thick paper but the printing is actually a bit blurry all the way around so we carry on with fittings jack etc going on the hull then we get to assembling and step 12 you're starting to assemble the machine guns as you can see it's very similar to constructing um, one of uh, the Tamiya flak railing sets very very similar guns going on it does have a color call out here it says met gray met gray whatever that is met gray metal gray gun metal whatever there's your figure assembly now these look very similar to Tamiya's old uh, SDKFZ71 flak veiling set I've checked the one these figures against the one that I have in my stash they're similar but the poses are slightly different so I'd say they're different figures based on the same concept then you have the figures going inside the turret now that's going to be a very tight squeeze very very tight squeeze which I guess is why all their photos from Academy don't show the figures in there you probably won't be able to move the gun because of the way the figures are they'll have that gun will be definitely fixed in place overleaf you just got the turret and the hull going together the tracks going on that's basically it it's step 17 this is the only color decal instructions that you have in the kit red brown olive green desert yellow so definitely need your internet book references to get the right color for this particular vehicle it would be red brown olive green over an overall uh, dark sand color base but you could camouflage this any way you wanted to it does show the decals going on which is a very basic crosses and this strange mark which we'll have a look at very shortly on the back is just a few more academy kits and that's the fairly basic fairly straightforward and simple instructions for this kit so let's have a look at the decal this is your basic decal sheet three crosses and that so it's not very well done but from the, what I can see it doesn't show up very well and it's really quite blurry and you probably wouldn't use it that looks to be a flak battle award the kind of award that you'd be receiving if you're a a trooper on one of these or in a flak battery or even a searchlight battery for shooting down enemy planes i find it hard to believe that it would actually be attached to a um, armored vehicle so you could probably forget that one altogether anyway i'll give you a close-up of that so you can have a look for yourself and in a second we'll have a look at the sprues right so let's have a look at the sprues and i think we'll start with the vinyl tracks which feel very different to normal tamiya vinyl but vinyl is vinyl the attachments for these is and i'll see if i can bring it up close so you can see there there we are four pins which go through those holes this bit of course gets cut off 
and then you can either try to super glue it or um, heat weld it together. These are your poly caps for all your road wheels, drive sprocket, etc. And they are in an interesting yellow colour. Alright, so that's the tracks and bits and pieces. Let's have a look at the lower hull. So, lower hull, as I said before, there's your place for your batteries. This is your switch and your motor. So, yes, this did come out originally in 1985 at about the same time that Tamiya had a lot of its motorized kits as well. So, nothing unusual about that from a Japanese kit. Fairly plain as far as detail is concerned. And like I said, this is an old style kit, so don't expect uh, yeehaw rivets and things like this all over it. But it will create quite a nice looking model with a bit of weathering and something like this. It should come out quite well. So that's the bottom of the tank. Let's have a look at the top. So this is the top. As you can see, the grills are not open. You do get hatches that can you, you can leave open if you want to, but um, there's no interior, so you might as well glue those shut unless you want to pose a figure sitting out of these. It does have a reasonable checker plate on here, although it is quite thick plastic you may want to thin these mud guards down a bit to make them a bit more scale representative but overall it is quite crisp and there's no flash on it even this this has been reboxed since way back when there's no flash on this mold that I can see so far and it is quite crisp so that's not bad not bad at all so that's the top of the hull. Let's have a look at the next sprue out, which is this one here, which is, as you can see, mud guards, back of the tank, spare wheels, etc., hatches handles, fittings, tools, and all sorts of bits and pieces like that. So let's have a look. So that's the front plate where the machine gun comes through. You do get a plate that goes in there, of course. Spare wheels. And like I said, there's no flash on this. The detail is quite crisp. It's a little bit of cleanup along the mole lines on some of the smaller parts, so it's not too bad at all. That's the back of the tank there. So... That's your um, exhaust chamber and exhaust pipe. Hooks could be a bit thick. Like I said, you might want to thin the mud guards down a bit by sanding them down from underneath just to give them a bit of scale thickness. There's your toes and a few tools. So overall, it's not too bad bit of clean up along the mold lines but that's not bad at all that will come out quite nicely with a good wash on it or something like that Right, so the next sprue is this one, which as you can see is all your wheels, your road wheels, your drive sprockets and your idle wheels and your suspension units. These are your drive hubs. So let's have a look at the suspension units. And I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it does have, maybe you can hear it, it does have uh, the leaf spring leaves detail in there so that's not too bad 
does have some nice bolt detail. There's your drive sprockets. Let's have a look at the other side of the drive sprockets. And that has got some nice detail on it. And your road wheels, sorry, turn that around. You can see the other side of the road wheels. So they're nicely done. I do like that. So yes, this is a Panzer IV. So this would be the same as these last few sprues would be exactly the same as probably all of Academy's Panzer IV hulls. Exactly the same parts. So there will be some parts on here that you may not use. But overall, you use most of these. So there's your wheels. So next brew we'll look at is this one. This is your turret, spare track links, cable and gun crew. So as you can see, the turret does have a base in it. That's what the gun will attach to. Interesting enough, the way they've molded this with the front centre section here. So you can get a good idea of how big that turret is and what it's actually going to look like. You do get, of course separate arms, legs, etc. for most of these crew members, separate heads. Let's have a look at his face. So the faces are, they are not too bad. They do have a reasonable kind of expression to them. Let's have a look at this guy. He's a bit, mm-hmm. But yes, they do look similar to Tamiya's old SDK have said, 7-1 flat crew but the poses are completely different I've checked and the legs are in different places and so are the arms so overall there's a little bit of cleanup along the mold line but the detail is quite nice and not much to see on the turret because they were plight plight quite I should say they were quite straightforward and not much detail and stuff stuck on the outside could be a little bit thick as far as the turret sides are concerned but i don't know if you want to go through sanding all those down and thinning them but that's entirely up to you so that is the turret of the flak berlin And the last two sprues are the guns themselves. So we'll have a look at this one first. So fairly straightforward. This is just the base of the gun itself. And the main centre mount. Spare magazines. So let's have a look at those. So this is very, very similar to Tamiya's flak verling. But the detail is eh, pretty much about the same. Really nicely done. Bit of clean up along the mould lines. Nothing unusual about that. That's the same with all kits. But overall, I do like that. You won't see much of this anyway because it's all going to be hidden inside the turret. And if you put the crew in, you won't see any of it. So that will be a choice of yours whether you want to put the crew in or not.
So this is the last sprue out. This is the guns, of course. Gun shield, which you don't use in this kit, which is a good thing because like the Tamiya flak veiling, it does have a lot of push out marks on it, which will need cleaning up. It doesn't say Tamiya on it. It just says Wind Mobile Wagon. So there's all your fittings for the guns. These are your mounting points for the guns themselves and the crew seats those are the guns that turn around there is a bit of molding push out here which you'll be have to clean up to fit them properly on the other side they're not too bad once you put a magazine in those they'll look quite good you might want to drill out the ends though so that they look like proper guns but then it's entirely up to you that's your seats there so overall this is not a bad little kit So that's it guys, that is Academy's Black Panzer 4 Whirlwind, came out in 1994, kit number 13236, a nice little kit actually, if you can pick one up cheap, um, I don't know about paying $35, $40 for it, plus postage, but um, you never know, it's entirely up to you, I think this will turn out quite nice, this one, nice bit of weathering on it, bit of, bit of wear and tear, and um, a decent paint job I think this will be a nice looking kit so anyway as I said that brings us to the end of this review hope you've enjoyed it thank you for your likes and your subscriptions and your comments always appreciated and as usual until next time guys take it easy stay safe and I will see you later